Thank you, Pastor. Your Excellencies, the Royal Majesty, and everyone here tonight, God is going to finish up all the problems you brought. And whatever you have not got on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, uh, today. Look at somebody there and say, today. The Lord is going to accomplish everyone in your life. Keep on standing. Father, we well, thank you. Lord, we we'll worship you. Great, mighty God. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you do wonders in every life. Confirm everything you have promised. And we will never be the same in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, And heaven unites with you to say, Amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight, we've been talking about Jesus, the all-sufficient Jesus. And we've looked at John, the gospel according to St. John, in the evenings at the crusade. And we've gone up to chapter 17. Now, we'll come to chapter 18, chapter 19, chapter 20, and chapter 21. And today, we're talking about Jesus, the Redeemer, seeking to restore, to renew, and to recommission us. He comes and he seeks for you. He looks for you. And he wants to restore you. Every height you fell from, you'll go back to that height. Every good thing that you are strayed away from tonight, you are returning in Jesus' name. It comes to restore. Number two, it comes to renew. It renew the strength of the spirit in your life tonight in Jesus' name. And it comes to recommission you. That means the commission God Almighty had for you from all eternity. And you have led that commission. Tonight is a recommissioning night. He recommission you. He recommission me. Amen. Once again, the message is Jesus. The Redeemer seeking to restore, to renew, and to recommission us. There are four things we're looking at. Number one, we're looking at the righteous carrier of our sins. He carried our sins away. He took everything, literally, everything you call sin, he came to take and carry out of your life the righteous carrier. Number two, the reproached Christ. The reproached Christ. That means all your reproach, all your shame, all the various things you have done that you shall brought earthly shame and eternal shame, Christ has borne that for you. For me. Number three is the risen conqueror. Risen conqueror. He rose. He rose from the dead. And he brings that resurrection power also into your life. The risen conqueror. Number four is the reassuring captain. He comes. And when you have lost hope and you have said, there is no point living. There is no point being positive. There is no point Make it going on and making progress. He comes to you, the captain of your salvation. And he reassures you tonight. All the hope you have lost, everything will come back. Look at number one there. Number one, we're looking at the righteous career of our sins. Smitten for our full redemption. 
righteous carrier. He carried all our sins away and carried all the consequences of sin away. Hey, look at John chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 22. In John chapter 18 verse 22, it says, And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answer is thou the high priest so look at verse 23 verse 23 says Jesus answered him if I have spoken evil bear witness of the evil but if well why smitest thou me smiting why smitest thou me can you think of the eternal Christ Eternal Emmanuel, God with us. Can you think of a Savior? Can you think of a Redeemer? Can you think of the one that had been in eternity with the Almighty God being smitten by a poor man, a wretched man, and said, you spoke against the high priest that way. He is the real high priest. I mean Christ. And for anybody to smite him like that, what do you think? If the most respected person you know will be smitten publicly, how do you feel? But here is the king of heaven. The king of saints and the lord of lords be smitten. Why? Why was he smitten? I say, chapter 53 and I'm reading from verse 4. It says in Isaiah 53, verse 4, Surely he has borne our griefs. That's the reason why he came to bear your grief and carried our sorrows. Carried. That's what we say. The righteous carrier of our sins. Yet we did esteem him stricken. Look at the next word there. Smitten of God, smitten of God and afflicted. Why was he smitten? Publicly like that in a shameful, reproachful way. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says but he was wounded for a transgression. Because of your transgression he was wounded. He was bearing the wound you should have borne. He was bearing the judgment that you should have borne. It says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's it. That's it. Because of your iniquity. Normally, you should have taken the bruises. You should have taken the smiting. But the Lord said, don't worry, I'll bear it for you. I thought you'll say amen there. The judgment, he said, I'll bear it for you. The yoke, he said, I'll bear it for you. All the agony and of the consequences of sin you have committed, he said, I'll bear it for you. I need to send a thank you. Glory to the Lord. Praise the Lord to heaven because he bore all my shame, he bore all my griefs, he bore all my sorrows, he bore all my sins. He carried them and carried them away. You will not carry it again. You will not be burdened by it anymore. And then it says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And then look at this. It says, with his stripes. Tell me. With his stripes, we are healed. I am healed. I said I am healed. Say it for yourself and find it true. By his stripes, we're healed. And look at verse 6. There's something important I need to point to you. In verse 6, in verse 6, in verse 6. Look at this. At the beginning, there's the word all. All, no exception. At the end of that verse, it says all, no exception. In the middle of that verse, it says 
everyone. Look at that. Look at that. That means today you are the candidate of the salvation of the Lord. Candidate of the forgiveness of candidate of the grace of God at the beginning all at the end of that verse all and in the middle of that verse everyone let me read it to you now all we like sheep have gone astray all we have turned everyone that's still all to his own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Give me a good day, amen. He laid on him. He laid on Christ. He laid on the one that came to carry all our sins away. He laid everything on him. He took it from you. Sin. He took it from you, the pressure. He took it from you, the punishment. He took it from you, the very presence of that sin. And everyone looks at you now. When you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, when you say, He is my Lord, all your iniquities, all your transgressions, all your sins are taken away. Taken away. Taken away. How many of your sins? How many of your iniquities? How many of your dead, dead misdeeds? All taken away. I announce you're free. I announce you're forgiven. Look at point number two here. We're coming to, we're coming to uh, now chapter 19 of John. John chapter 19 i'm reading there from verse 30 john 13 19 rather i was looking at verse 30 look at verse 30 when jesus this same jesus we're talking about the one that is all sufficient for you for me and for everyone when jesus therefore had received the finger he said it is finished let me shout just that it is finished let me hear the shout of that there are words there it is finished what does that mean it the salvation it the redemption it is the healing it is the deliverance it is the final statement that judgment will not come on you anymore jesus went to the cross he died on the cross and the last word that he said he said it your salvation finalized you're not looking here and there again. Where is salvation? Where is forgiveness? It is finished. You're not saying, where is the freedom? And where is the, where is the redemption that he has done? In that word, it, we have redemption there. We have salvation there. We have forgiveness there. We have new life there. It is finished. Somebody shout amen. amen. The next word there is. Is. That means now. Is. That means today. Is. That means at the present time. Is. Whatever was not finalized before. It's now done. And you don't have to say I'll wait till tomorrow. He did not say it will be. He said it is. Praise the Lord. Your salvation is going to be a present salvation. Praise the Lord. The joy of salvation is at the very present moment. It's going to be upon your life in Jesus name. Healing is. Deliverance is. Is freedom is it is at the very present time. Give me a shout of amen. You know, some people they say, Okay, 
after the program, I will see the preacher. It's okay to see the preacher. If you see the preacher, you are coming with your testimony. Not that you are coming for the healing because it is done right here. It is done while you're sitting or standing there because it is. What's the next word there? Tell me, tell me. Finished. 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 Your agony all finished. Your suffering all finished. Amen. And all the oppression of the devil finished. What does that mean? Finalized, finalized. Nothing else. No remnant of that disease. No remnant of that heartache will remain. Finished, finalized. Finished. What does that mean? Complete. It means the miracle now is complete. Give me a good day. Amen. The deliverance now complete. It means perfect, perfected. When it says it is finished, it is perfected. And I see you tonight there. You are receiving that finished healing, that finished miracle, that finished, finalized, complete, perfect solution to your problem tonight in Jesus' name. It is finished. The condemnation of my sin, it is finished. The judgment over my sin, it is finished. The weakness of my past life, it is finished. The bondage that you had, it is finished. Shout, it is finished. Believe it as you say it, it is finished. Understand the experience comes to you as you say it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. I come into point number three. Point number three the reason conqueror. Bringing us redemption and righteousness. The reason conqueror. And because he has risen, he has brought something. Look at John chapter 20. And I'm reading from verse 1. John chapter 20 verse 1. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene. Early. When it was shed dark unto the sepulchre and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. The stone is rolled away. I said the stone is rolled away. Many people ask, how are you so sure that Jesus rose from the dead? Number one, the soldiers were guarding the place. That they were not allow any friend, any disciple to come there. And one friend, one disciple couldn't have rolled away the stone. Those soldiers were guarding the place. Then, as quick from heaven, came and rolled away the stone. You understand? The soldiers were military men on earth. But the one that came to roll the stone away was from heaven. And then when Mary got there and the rest of the people searching for him, they found the stone rolled away. Nobody could have done that. Not only that, number two. The soldiers that were there, when that angel came from heaven and rolled away the stone, they fell flat on their faces. The power of resurrection 
overpowered them, overcame them, and threw them lying on the ground. And those soldiers had they had no they had no doubt that Christ rose from the dead. Not only that, if you read the whole chapter, at the disciples came Peter and John, Peter ran and John ran beyond him, and they entered the tomb and they found an empty tomb. Nobody in there. They found an empty tomb. The testimony of those people that found the empty tomb that shows that Jesus was risen. Not only that, the soldiers went to the powers that be. They went to the people that appointed them there and they said, you know what? Jesus rose from the dead. They said, shh, stop. Don't say that. Say somebody have come to take him away when you were sleeping. Isn't it a crime for those soldiers watching to even accept we were sleeping? Sleeping on duty. Those leaders, they knew that Jesus rose again. And you know like I know. And I know like you know that Jesus Christ who died and who was buried, that he rose again. I said he rose again. The disciples were lodged behind closed doors. And Jesus, the reason to understand, the earthly Lord, if he wants to enter a place when he was still on earth, before his crucifixion, before his death, before his rising from the dead, wanting to enter anywhere, he will knock at the door. And somebody from inside has to open the door. But now, evidence that he rose from the dead, he went through the locked door. He can go through the wall and go through anywhere. And today, any barrier before you, he will go through and get to you there. And he said, Peace be still. Peace. Peace. My peace I give unto you. He rose again. And because of that, everything that is dead in you will rise again. Everything dormant in your life will rise again. Because of that, your hope will rise again. When? When? <laughs> you will do it in your life in Jesus' name. Because the power of his resurrection will walk in your life. Look at Romans chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 9. Romans chapter 10. We're reading from verse 9. It says that if thou shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved give me a good amen it's asking us not to have blind faith I believe I believe I believe no it says, consider the stone rolled away. Fact. It says, consider the empty tomb. A fact. It says, consider the falling down of the soldiers when the angel came from heaven. That's a fact. It says, consider that those um, soldiers went to the leaders in the land. And they said, that man is risen. That's a fact. It says, consider that those leaders even wanted, they wanted to bribe them. They actually bribed them so that they will say he did not try. A fact. It says, consider that when the disciples went there, they saw an empty tomb. It says, consider while Mary turned and saw somebody that she thought was the gardener. Said, sir, if you have taken my Lord away from here, 
show me where you have taken him. And Jesus said, Mary. And her eyes opened. And she knew that it's, it's a fact. It's a fact. What's, what he's saying is, when you see a fact, whoever you are, well, will you not believe the fact? He says, when you know this is for real, well, will not you believe that? Somebody says, I mean, scientists, yes, I understand. We scientists will work with facts. And I showed you the facts now. He now says, if you have the courage to believe and to confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, I shall believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead tonight. Thou shalt be saved. Look at verse 10. He says in verse 10, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. He's just saying what you believe in your heart, confidently say it out. You know, there was, there was a time that many people in the world, they believed that the world was flat. Not like a globe. Flat. As if when you are walking on the, on the earth, you will soon get to the edge and you fall over the cliff. But somebody discovered it is round. It's a globe. And because he knew that was a fact, he said it, and the people who have not investigated, he said, no, that cannot be. And eventually, he kept on saying uh, what he believes. You must keep on saying what you believe, that Jesus is Savior, and that he rose from the dead. He says, if you believe it in your heart, you'll confess it with your mouth, and salvation is yours. Salvation is mine. Because I believe in my heart that he rose from the dead. He became Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And I believe. Because I believe, I say to with my mouth, and salvation is mine. Redemption is mine. Salvation is yours. Somebody shout amen there. We're coming to number four now. Number four. The reassuring captain, broadening, the recommissioning of the restored. Well, the story here is this. Peter, because he knew he had disappointed the Lord, the disappointment grew to discouragement. And then he told the others, he says, I go a fishing. Nothing wrong with fishing, but the problem was with him, he had dropped that before. He had given up that before. And the Lord had given him the promise, I will make you not fish a fisher at the sea, but fishers of men. He abandoned God's call for him because he felt she was a disappointment. And because he felt discouraged. And the other people also said, we go with you. And became a stumbling block to other people. You will not be a stumbling block. Your vomit that you had dropped before, you will not swallow it back again. A good, good amen. That night, Jesus visited them. I would have thought a man who became a disappointment like that. He described me to other people. I would have thought Jesus should have said, you're going your way, go. But Jesus never abandons a discouraged person. You're discouraged. You've done things in your discouragement. 
They say I am bad. All right, I'm bad. I am. They, that's what they say. I'll prove it to them. I am bad. And you think Jesus will not come to you again? At that moment, Jesus will come to you. Somebody said, look at brother so-and-so. And another person said, are you calling him brother so-and-so? He's a backslider. Leave him alone. Ah, they call me backslider. All right. Since they call me backslider, I am backslider. You will think that Jesus will not come to him again. Jesus will come to you. Wherever you are, whatever you have done, however you have gone astray, Jesus comes to you tonight. I am surprised. And I shouldn't be surprised. I am surprised. When Jesus got there, he didn't call all those disciples, seven of them all together, bunch of backsliders. No, Jesus never you see, it's any bad language for ever anyone. No matter where you have gone, what you have done. It says, children, do you have any bread? Children, do you have any bread? The bad name you have given yourself, Jesus will cancel that bad name. And the bad opinion you have about yourself, Jesus will cancel that bad opinion. Do you have any bread? And he said, no. He wanted them to remember. He wanted them to remember that what they were at the first time when he met Peter, when he met James and John, they had caught nothing. They had gone back to that situation. But he will help them. He will help them. That's why we love Jesus. He will help you. Tonight, he will help you. He said, cast your net there. And they didn't argue. They didn't say, no, there's nothing there. We are experienced fishermen. And we've been here all night. They just did what Jesus said. You will do what Jesus is saying. And they cast their net there. And lo and behold, they caught a lot. You will catch a lot. Emptiness in your life will turn to fullness. I said emptiness in your life will turn to fullness. And then they brought the fish up shore. And he didn't say, Peter, you see now, you denied me three times. See the result. Never. He has not come to condemn. He will not condemn you. He said, come and dine. I don't know why any reasonable person will see Jesus and see all these things that happen and not accept Christ. Look at him. Instead of bringing condemnation, he said, come and dine. He had cooked for them. And the edge. Then he said, Peter, Simon Peter, lovest thou me? Oh, Peter said, I love you. Despite what happened, I love you. Despite my weakness, cowardice, I love you. Despite my denying you, I love you. And Jesus didn't say, I don't believe. I don't accept. Uh, some people say, if I repent and call on the Lord, will God, will God accept my confession? Yes, yes, yes. I will accept today as you confess him and you say, I love you, Lord. He said, That's all right. I accept. You accept him, he will accept you. The second time, what did Jesus ask? The second time, he wanted Peter to realize what he was saying. 
And for Peter to understand, I said it once, I said it twice, I hear myself, I believe myself. Lovest thou me? Yes, Lord, I do. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. The third time, the third time, Jesus said, Simon Peter, son of Jonas, do you love me? Really, really love me? And he said, Lord, you know all things. You know from the depth of my heart, I love you. And Jesus said, I said, no, I accept. Whatever confession you make about Christ tonight, he will accept. He will forgive you. He will erase the past. And Jesus said, what he said at the beginning, he said, follow me. Follow me. A renewed call. A recommissioning. Follow me. As he was following John, the beloved, John also followed. And Peter said, Lord, what will this man do? And Jesus said, what is that to you? You follow me. Don't look at other people. What will that lady do? What will that man do? What will that friend do? The Lord has called you. And you are going to respond to the call. And you say, I will follow. I will follow. I will follow. Whatever others do, whatever others do not do, I will follow Jesus Christ. Say it. I will follow Jesus Christ. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, I have decided I'll follow. I'm going to follow. You followed, you indicated from the first day I followed Jesus. And now you are taking the final, final, final decision. I will follow. Nothing will turn your back. A friend will not turn your back. Somebody jesting will not turn your back. And because he followed, Peter became a significant person in the kingdom of God. The decision you make for Christ tonight, turning away from everything of the past and turning onto this new faith in Christ will make you significant in life. Significant for life significant throughout your life and everybody said it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed this final day you are taking the decision i follow christ i turn away from the past i turn to christ my savior, the reason one. As you are taking that decision, and you say, I'll follow. I'll follow. And I'll not turn back anymore. I'll follow. Then restoration will come. Salvation will come. The blessings of heaven will come upon you. Anyway, you are raised up that hand. You're saying, I'm following Christ. I am following Christ anywhere, anywhere, right, left, center, at the back. I follow, raise up that hand. Online, I follow Christ. Forget your past. The Lord is calling you today. I follow Christ. And over the television you are watching, over the radio you are listening, I'll follow. Just raise up your hand there. God bless you. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up. No shame. Stand up and say, I follow. By your standing up, you're declaring whether 
others follow or not, whether others agree or not, whether others join me or not, this is my decision. I follow Christ. As you are standing, tell the Lord quietly there, Lord Jesus, I thank you. You were crucified for me. You died for me. You are buried for me. You rose again for me. And now I've decided I'll follow you for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Keep on standing. We're praying, Father. We thank you for the call that has come forth. We thank you for the faith you put in the heart of the people who are standing. They know that Jesus rose from the dead for a fact. And they are believing that fact right now. Lord, I pray new life will come to everyone. Salvation will come to everyone. New life and eternal life for everyone standing, believing in Jesus' name. Give them the joy of salvation and the new life that comes for salvation. Thank you, Lord. It is done. Salvation is there. Redemption is there. Restoration is there. It's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. Keep on standing. Our counselors will come to you right now. And they'll take your details. So I will call on our moderating overseer tonight to help us at this time. It is finished. Your sins forgiving. Keep standing. Keep standing. Please, all the workers, it's a massive crowd. It's the second field, left and right, the classrooms, even outside. First, all the workers, regional overseers, group pastors, district coordinators, everybody, please. Choristers, could you go in now to capture the. Don't cancel. Don't cancel. Just capture their data, please. Name, address, phone number. Check up the number, the digits. If you miss anyone, you have lost that person, no more contact with the convener. Please, be fast yet thorough, meticulous, attentive, vigilant. Let's go in now, please. Keep standing, please. Keep standing. Tonight is a surprising night. Nobody should move. We have closing ceremony very soon now. Please, be fast, please. Fast, fast. Go down, down also. Down, 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 down the second field. And also by my right, some standing, more than those sitting down. Please. Don't forget to give us accurate data to, so we'll be able to help you. The baptism, there'll be, there'll be uh, banquets on 7th, baptism on 13th. Globally, what I'm doing here, do the same thing in, in Africa, countries, the same thing in Southwest, South, South. That's why the, the pastor has sacrificed his time and, and energy to go around the globe because Christ is coming very soon. So be attentive to this major reason, the content of his going around that this one's now. So please, all the choristers going in now, get their data, don't cancel, be fast, because this night is historic. Go ahead now, go ahead. Those online, look at the, the, the link there, click it, you see a form there, fill it and send to us quickly. Because Christ is coming very soon. And that's why GCK is evolving now to capture some Asia, in America, everywhere, in Africa, before he comes. And he's coming, he's at the door. So please be attentive to what they are doing now. Look at the digits. Is it complete? The addresses. They can describe it on paper there. They can write. Write for them. You have more than two or three bios on you. Please, fast, fast, fast. 
Please, our converts, don't forget that you still have much to learn. After this one, there's banquet for you, all locations. Here is 4 p.m., all over the world. Then the baptism also on 13th. Then there's also to disciple you. There's, there's, there's some, some, some uh, lectures on that, some outlines. These other churches in Wukari here, we'll give them a, a pastor here will give the material for your church, for, for the banquets, for the baptism, for the exams. Which there'll be exams after the, after the baptism, some, some, some studies, about six studies, some weeks. They will come back to, to be examined and then to see how they can help them to stand, to stop backsliding. Remember Bible studies, you don't fail that. Remember Thursday, we have the first Thursday, second, third Thursday for supernatural uh, revival. It's global. And the pastor, our, our convener, is in charge of that also. So be around to be groomed for heaven so you don't bust light. So give us your, your, your data, please. Go down. Remember to go down, to go outside, left and right. Someone standing there. Please, don't miss anybody. Make sure you get the data. We shall send them SMS this night or tomorrow morning to guide them. I would, su- I would suggest that you keep the GS material, the book, the letter of the pastor until the banquet. So they give them their, they may misplace this here now as they're going. So keep the, keep the material for, of the pastor because it's very, very important material that will make them to stand. Pastor's book, his letter to them, and so on. Please keep it and then give them on the seventh on Sunday as they come for, 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 for the banquet. Do that quickly. Be fast, but be, 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 be thorough. Be meticulous. Be attentive. That's why the pastor is here in Wugare. Nothing else. Not for any, any jamboree. He came for souls. That's why he's sacrificing life, energy, everything. Go, going around the globe for the world before Christ comes or death comes. The first place, uh, choristers, all of you, all the workers who are in the training, go in now, please. Remember, don't move out because there will be closing ceremony for this Ukari crusade. This is a unique crusade to my mind. The massiveness, the way the pastor was received on Thursday was massive to me. It was the best. So please, let's be fast, please. I want to honor the governor, honor the, the, honor the indigents, honor the kingdom here tonight also. So go down, 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 down the road also. Don't cancel, don't, don't delay. Just get the name, get the address, get the phone number. If there's email, that's all right. Remember those, I'm sure, some by my left, I'm sure. Please, some down, down, even by the kitchen. It's a massive crowd to my mind. Massive, in, incredible crowd I've seen in Wukare. Waiting for you now, the pastor is loaded. Loaded. There'll be a prayer now. This prayer will, will usher you to a higher realm. Whatever, whatever ailment, whatever sickness, whatever challenge, they will bow. it's the last day. They will bow tonight. You miss today, you will cry. So please be attentive. Don't be focused. Don't go away. Because tomorrow morning, we're no more here. Even tonight, by 10, we're off here. So don't miss tonight. What do you want? It is finished. The pastor will pray. The final Amen, you stay. I will guide you. I will guide you. Don't, rush, don't come out. I will tell you what to do. It's a special night. Because there's a massive cry for testimony. There are many that are waiting to testify. So we shall guide the tes- testimony to accommodate this closing ceremony tonight. Waiting for you now. When you are done, can we indicate by my front, those behind? Down, 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 down. I'm not seeing you. Down the road. Please. Get the accurate digits of the, of the phone numbers, please, of, of the handsets, so that you don't miss anybody out. If you miss somebody out, that person is no more connected with the with convener. Please, because we shall be sending the messages to them for baptism, for banquets, separate classes. Globally, what they're doing here, do, do the same thing in, 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 in Aba, the same thing in Port Harcourt, same thing we're doing here in Calabar, everywhere, so you don't miss anybody. Even in Europe, I don't know about your time frame there, timing. 
Are you in your room, wherever you are? Get that link and fill it up and send to us to be guided. The same virtual banquet on, on the same day, uh, 7th. It's, it's a global thing. There's a message from the pastor. There's a booklet which I give you. There's letters from the pastor. It's a package to sustain us at this critical time globally. The global is, is out of course. I mean, the whole world is out of course. That's why this is, is here now. In fact, it's, a, it's evolving. You will see more, more this quarter by the grace of God. Keep praying for our pastor. It is evolving. When you are done, can we indicate, please, so you can save time. And yet, you are not rushing. Don't miss anything. No mission. No mistake. No mistake at all. Particularly in the phone number. That's our contact points. Tonight or tomorrow morning, they will, they will receive a message. Guiding them what to do. And the venue of the, of the, of the, of the banquet, the baptism, and so on. Tonight, please, those are waiting, you are sick, you have problems. Tonight, everything must bow because that, that is the final light. This, this is the, 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 the epilogue, the grand finale for Ukare, Ukare Taraba State. Missed tonight, then you have missed it. Missed it. So stay around, give us accurate data. You are sick, health problem, whatever it is, it is finished. Pastor will not touch you. There will be nothing. Just, he will send the word to us and, and he'll be healed, delivered. And that's it. Then, then you, you don't come out. I'll tell you what to do tonight. It's a special night. It shall guide you by, the, by his grace. When you're done, can you indicate by the middle? I'm not seeing any hand. When you're done, all right, middle is okay. But how about by my right, your own left. When you're done, you indicate. All right. I'm not seeing far, far now. Please, our connectors, check up that. I've seen the ones here now. But the next field, I don't see. Make sure that you get all the slips and then see how to also contact the churches. All right, I'm seeing that one now. I think we're almost done. The pastor is also set. And to, today we see power. It's a power night today. Special power night that will ease up, cancel every sickness, every challenge, every power of darkness. It is finished. Shall we say amen? amen. All right. It's done now. It's done. It's done. Rise up now. The pastor is here. Praise the Lord. Tonight is your night. Jesus will not miss you. You will not miss your miracle. It is finished. Your sickness finished. Your pain finished. Your disease finished. Every problem, every mountain in your life tonight finished in Jesus' name. Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand where you have the challenge, you will not carry that thing back home. We're ready now. Heaven is ready for you. Get ready. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know from the declaration of Christ, it is finished. Sickness is finished. Disease is finished abnormalities in family in the body finished lord i pray right now you touch everyone you break every yoke you destroy the works of the devil without exception set everyone free that madness i command you you are taken away in Jesus' name. Swelling in your body, vanish away in Jesus' name. Blindness, Lord, open those eyes right now. And deafness, dumbness, make them speak and hear in Jesus' name. Cancer, you're healed. Ulcer, 
you are healed. Any strange sickness, disease in your body, you are healed in Jesus' name. Every attack, totally cancelled. Any discomfort, completely removed. Lord, everywhere now, right, left, center, back, front, online, over the television, over the radio, everywhere, all their sicknesses, infirmities, and diseases, they are finished in Jesus' name. You are healed. You are delivered. You are set free. That the manifestation of that finished work in your life right now. I am healed. I am whole. From the top of my head to the tip of my toe. I am healed. It is done. It is done. It is finished. In Jesus' name we pray. Together.